So imagine spending thousands on sneakers only to realize you've made a huge mistake and you end up having to sell your entire sneaker collection. Well, unfortunately that happened to me. So I'm gonna give you 10 things I wish I knew before I started to pursue my passion for sneakers, as well as giving you an update on what I've actually got left in the collection. So buying sneakers can cost a lot of money and it can be a significant investment. And you can see the difference in your bank account when you've got a sneaker addiction like I did because I was just buying them like they, was, they were candy. I was going crazy and I dread to think the amount of money I've actually spent buying sneakers over the last three to four years. Probably in the tens of thousands of pounds, I spent a ton of money buying sneakers. Speaking of spending money on sneakers, this is one of my more expensive purchases. This is the Wave Runner and I think these retail for like £250 when they first came out. But yeah, such an iconic colorway from the Yeezys. And this is, funny enough, the only Yeezy I've got in my collection at the moment. I sold them all. Second thing I wish I knew before I started my passion for sneakers and collecting sneakers is the commitment. So owning sneakers, you think you just buy them, you wear them and that's it. When you own a collection of sneakers, that's a whole different ball game because there's a lot that goes into it. It takes time to take care of all your shoes because you have to clean them. You have to make sure that they look good when you're actually wearing them so you have to clean them and if you don't wear them they'll literally start to break apart so that is definitely one thing to consider and while we're here i'm going to talk about my favorite shoe from my collection which is the japan pack this is the neutral gray co.jp and i have literally worn these so many times i've taken them so many places in the world they are incredible i love these jordan ones and one thing I need to mention about the Jordan 1 highs as well, as much as I love them, they are super uncomfortable, but for some reason, these are super comfortable on the feet. And I've worn them so many times, you can see, not much grease on them. Absolutely amazing shoe. Another thing that has become very, very apparent over the last, I'd say, three to four years is hype culture and the hype beasts and all of that. So that's definitely one thing I wish I knew before actually starting to collect sneakers. Obviously, I knew there was, but the heights that it got to in 2020 and 2021 was just outrageous so some of my favorite sneakers i actually can't get my hands on them because they're so elusive and they're so hard to get because of the hype that goes around and people buying them and selling them uh, for resale just for resale when you want to buy a pair of shoes so that's one thing i wish i knew and speaking about hype i'm going to show you one of the best sneakers probably the best sneaker of all time that is in my collection i'm pretty sure you may have a pair of these as well and that is a Nike Air Force One in all white. And I think everyone should have a pair of these in their collection. So this is definitely something that everyone should have in their collection, a white pair of Air Force Ones. And I've actually worn these a few times, not creasing yet, but it's getting there. I think I need a new pair soon. Number four is authenticity. And I've been doing YouTube for now for four years. Um, yeah, four years. And I have never reviewed a fake shoe. And I never will. I've had so many DMs, emails from all of these people. So oh, we run a sneaker company which only sells um, unauthorized shoe from X country. And we'll be happy to send you a pair. You can review it for free. You can have the shoe. Afterwards, there's no obligation. I've had some people actually offer to pay me to do it. That is something I would never do. I would never review fake shoes on my channel. One thing with authenticity is you need to know shoes and you need to do your research before you buy a shoe on a secondary market as well because there is the fakes are just as good as the real ones. You need to know how they look, how they smell, the stitching, the materials. You need to know all of this when it comes to authenticity. And funnily enough, I've only ever bought one pair of shoe from a second, uh, I'd say a resale platform and that was when I bought these sneakers from StockX and the only reason I bought these is because they went down in value so much. I think these are probably the only off-whites you can get at a really, really low price. These you can get them below retail, but I love these sneakers. They are just so outrageously insane. They got holes all over them. This is off-white at its best, in my opinion. Absolutely insane what they've done to these Nike Blazers really really cool the black pair is pretty nice but i think the white pair with the yellow on it just makes it look even better another thing i wish i knew was the care i think i've mentioned this briefly but care for your shoes can be very expensive and time consuming as well so i've been fortunate enough pretty early on when i have started my youtube ch channel maybe a year in 
um defense sent me a bunch of stuff which i've actually still got here so i've got like a shoe cleaner from defense and this is brilliant um i've got some shoe protector spray as well you spray this over your shoe and it makes the shoe actually really good i've done a test on that as well so if you want to check the video out i'll i'll leave a link here and it, it's really good the shoe protecting spray and the shoe cleaner are really good but they also sent me some other stuff um hand sanitizing cream and you got these spot cleaners as well which is really good so before that i used to buy all of this stuff by myself i used to use crep protect i used to buy the shoe cleaner um with the brush and all of that and that costs money uh, another thing i do whenever i buy a pair of sneakers is to buy one of these bad boys um these save most of my sneakers from creasing and this is a shoe protect crease protector up for your shoe and this is very very important for me i get these from amazon check the link in my description if you want to go check out these these are absolutely brilliant for protecting your shoe from creasing um i've had these in my in these and as you can see no creasing for years i've taken them out now so you can see they're creasing up now but i had these in for like two three years so i actually got these in 2020 and as you can see still in really good condition because of the crease shield now i used to be a guy that loved luxury sneakers and i still have only one luxury sneaker left which is this balenciaga sneaker which i really like it's in all white it is absolutely incredible i need to use that spot cleaner on this shoe because it needs a proper clean but as you can see this is a really really dope snoot really really dope sneaker back in like maybe 2017 maybe 15 16 17 these sneakers were really, really popular. So the next thing on my list is the sneaker community. And that is one thing I wish I had my hand on the pulse a little bit earlier when I first started my sneaker journey and collecting sneakers. Cause obviously I was always interested in sneakers. I just never started collecting until a few years ago. And one thing I wish I knew that I know now is where everything is. Like, how do you get these sneakers? Where are they dropping? How are they dropping? Is it going to be a raffle? Is it going to be a buy now? Like there is a bunch of stuff that you need to know before. And I was a little bit lacking on that to start with, but then over time it kind of came to me and I actually know where to find these sneakers. And that is one thing you need to do. You need to keep your finger on the pulse if you want to get the shoe that you're looking for. And you need to look at contingencies as well. So if you can't get the sneaker, where can you buy it on the secondary market? Where can you buy it for resale? You're going to go to StockX, you're going to go to eBay, Gold, all of them and when the sneaker does come available and you do get it in hand if you get it on the secondary market is the shoe real so you need to make sure you know what you're looking for you need to look at the texture the colors and all of that so you need to keep your hand on the pulse when it comes to buying sneakers because you don't want to get scammed out here so yeah this sneaker here is one of my favorites in the collection this is the blue pair from the japan pack which i've got here so these are the exact same as you can see the swoosh is the same it looks the same this is that japan shoe as well really really cool i really like these this is something i'll never get rid of from my collection no matter what happens i'll always keep these this is something that caught me out very very quickly and that is storage where are you going to store 10 20 30 sneakers in your collection so i live in an apartment and i don't have enough space to store all of my sneakers and that caught me out very very early on i had to make shelves in my closet i had to buy a bunch of stuff just to make room for all the boxes because at the time i was keeping some of the boxes and i didn't want to get rid of them because just in case i had to sell the shoe so that's one thing you need to keep in mind if you're going to start your passion of collecting sneakers you need to make sure you have the space to do it because what you don't want is a bunch of boxes piling up in your living room which kind of happened to me for a little bit and yeah that didn't go down well so make sure you have the storage and that can take a lot of time to find storage for your sneakers as well but yeah i'm going to show you one of my latest pickups and it is the new balance 991 and this shoe yeah this is the one this is the one i'm i've been converted to a new balance fan because of this shoe this shoe is insane on feet i've only worn it a couple of times but i'm sold I'm just going to be rocking new balances for the near future. These are insane. Uh, review to come on these just to show you how good they are and how versatile the shoe is as well. Number eight is resale. And I wish I paid attention to the resale market because I, to be fair, I wasn't that guy that was going to be reselling a bunch of shoe or buying a bunch of shoe for resale. So I never really paid it too much attention. But after a few months in, I realized that I had to pay attention because I'm going to buy, if I'm going to have a YouTube channel, I'm going to be buying sneakers that 
necessarily I don't really want to keep I'm gonna to have to resell them and I don't want to resell them for prices that they're not worth so that's one thing I kept in mind when I started my passion like if I am going to collect sneakers I'm gonna to have to be able to trade sneakers so it is more like a trading you keep them you wear them for a little while then you sell them or you keep them you review them and then sell them after so I had to make sure I know exactly the value of a shoe and for me StockX kind of gives you a really really good idea of what a shoe is worth and over the last i'd say two years um buying sneakers has become very very cheap um compared to where they were the previous two years where everything was overpriced now everything is below retail pretty much everything is below retail so it's good for anyone that wants to start a sneaker collection it is good which is why i've, I've started again i'm going to start my sneaker collection i'm going to try and buy every sneaker that i missed out on i want to try and get them all for below retail so that's the aim for the next two years number nine for me is comfort and not all sneakers are made equally not because a shoe fits you it's going to be comfortable and this is something i learned very very early on because my favorite shoe of all time is the jordan one high but these sneakers are notoriously uncomfortable for me i don't know what it is i think it's because of the narrow toe box they are so so uncomfortable i have to go a half size up regardless because of how uncomfortable these are. Um, shoe that I never thought would be comfortable for me because I actually had one before and then I didn't like the fit on the shoe to be honest with you, was the 991s. And now I've got a pair that I actually went into the store and tried it on and actually felt how they feel on feet. Going through the size in these is unbelievable. My feet fit so good in these and it's because it's got a wider toe box as you can see. The shoe is unbelievable. So while I hold my favorite shoe release of the last few years, the Jordan 1 Lowe's, I'm going to talk about the last thing that I wish I knew better and it kind of set me off a disaster and that's balance. Um, starting a YouTube channel, collecting sneakers and making reviews all the time can be very time consuming and it did take up a lot of my time. As you know, I have a full time job, I, I work in tech and I don't have time to review sneakers as much and to take care of them. It's kind of why at the end of selling all of them um i sold over a hundred pairs of sneakers on StockX over the last maybe two years just getting rid of pretty much everything i've got um these are the ones that i've kept and i've added some more to it but yeah you should try and find a balance and that's what i had to do i had to try and find a proper balance between uh, my passion for sneakers as well as collecting reviewing uh, and selling because that can take up a lot and I mean a lot of time to find the time to do everything so yeah don't let sneakers or your passion consume your life but yeah these are absolutely incredible so those are the 10 things I wish I knew before I started collecting sneakers and if you find the information useful remember to hit the subscribe button below and I have a really cool video coming up next you want to subscribe for that that will be coming out in a couple of weeks time peace